Alright, yeah, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. So, we are once again continuing on our budget week, but this week we're going to be using Under the Sea. So, this budget list is a blue green merfolk list. So, I'm sure many of you guys have seen my merfolk list in the past. This one's a more budget version of that list. And also, uh, Wizards have recently given us a merfolk starter list. So, a lot of the cards in this deck are in that list as well. Mostly the uncommons, but there are a few occasional little bits, and you can uh, you can tweak the deck based on things that you're missing, just using off the uh, the starter deck alone. I'll show you guys the starter deck after I've gone through this deck text. So, the way that we are planning to win is a mixture of either beatdown or value. So the value creatures in this particular case are like Deep Root Elite, so one and a green for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever another merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target merfolk you control. So the more merfolk we play, the more powerful our merfolk become. Similar to that, we've got merfolk misbinder. The more merfolk we play, the more merfolk gets powerful. So green and a blue for a 2-2. Two, two. This is our merfolk lord. So all of our other merfolk get plus one, plus one. So the wider we go, the better we go. That's usually the case. We've also got jungleborn pioneer to go wide. Two and a green, when it ends the battlefield, you get to create a 1-1 one, one blue merfolk creature token with hexproof. So this is two bodies. Really nice combo with deep root elite, since we are getting two counters on the elite. Uh, what you want to be doing when you're playing this deck is making sure that deep root elite is out of removal range. You're not so much concerned about that if you are aware that your opponent is running hard removal. Things like fatal push and things like that. If they're running red removal though, um, like lightning strikes and shocks just be aware that putting your counters in certain places is going to actually matter uh, you might lose value if you stack all your counters on deep root elite and they go and shock it in response so you are going to lose value there we can interact somewhat with our opponent in that case though we do have three copies of spell pierce one blue counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays two this is to stop our opponent from um, board wiping on curve it's also to remove uh, potential removal spells, things like that. Uh, planeswalkers, our opponent would like to play them on curve. We're going to try and get under our opponent's curve, so we can really punish that with spell pierce. Counter until unless you pay two is a little bit worse off in the late game, obviously, because they'll have more mana, they'll be easier to pay for it, but maybe you'll have stacked up some spell pierces at that point. Jade Bearer is similar to Deep Root Elite, just a little bit dumbed down. It's our, one of our turn one players anyway, because we do want to get out of the gate in a hasty fashion on occasion. So one green for a 1-1. One, one. When it ends the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on another target merfolk you control. So you can't put the counter on itself, so there is often a uh, a situation where you might want to hold the Jade Bearer until like turn 3 or turn 2, uh, based on the fact that you want to put that counter somewhere. Because it's essentially a one mana two two if you play it off of curve, which is nice. Commander Speaker uh, is kind of the similar kind of situation. One green for a one one. However, this one gets plus one plus one as long as you control another merfolk or an island. So, uh, if you are playing Jade Bearers and Commander Speakers in the same turn, you want a Speaker first and then Jade Bearer, because your Commander Speaker will be attacking uh, as a three three with a Jade Bearer. Um, that kind of thing. You want to be aware of the order that you place things. We also have River Sneaks. River Sneaks are one of my favorite merfolks, which is why I'm running them. Uh, one and a blue for a 1-1. One, one. Cannot be blocked, so this is a great target for all of your counters and things like that. You shouldn't overdo it, uh, because it does have a secondary ability which can um, kind of compromise based on... The fact that you're not putting counters on it constantly. Because whenever another merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, River Sneak gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. So it's already pumping itself to a pretty ridiculous size most of the time anyway. So putting the counters on it is not always necessary. Although if your opponent is lacking removal, a single creature like River Sneak is going to destroy your opponent. We are kind of a value deck as well, so in the late game we do like to draw a lot of cards. It's not so bad when our opponent wipes the board because we're running things like Silver Gill Adept. So Silver Gill Adept is a 1 and a blue for a 2-1 that when it enters the battlefield it draws a card. It does have a downside which says as an additional cost we have to reveal a merfolk or it costs 5. So in the late game we might end up paying 5 if we get it off the top, but in the early game we've likely got a crap ton of merfolk. Because really, 
The only thing that isn't a merfolk in our deck is spell pierce and lands. So it's a very good chance that Adept gets to reveal something. And you want to be revealing things that you plan on um, playing in future turns. Unless, of course, you want to keep something a secret. Like, you might not want to reveal a Mistbinder if you want to bait with a Jade Bearer or something like that. So you want to reveal the card that you want countered in that particular situation. We've got Merfolk Branchwalker as another value creature. One and a green for a 2-1. When it enters the battlefield, it explores. So it, we look at the top card of our library. It's either a creature and we like it and we keep it on top and get a counter, or we graveyard it. If it's a land, then that's one land that we're not going to draw. So I think regardless of the outcome of Branch Walker, you're going to get some decent value on it. You know, we're running 22 lands, so if we can hit land drops off Branch Walker and stop flooding out that way, it's really nice. Uh, finally, we got Kamena. So Kamena is the late game value beast. Um, I'd probably run four copies of Kamena if I did have a, rare, a Mythic Wild card left around, but I don't. One a green and a blue for a 2-4. He has three abilities. He can tap and untap Merfolk to become uh, unblockable. And it's pretty similar to the River Sneak in that sense, so we can just tap a creature to get in for a nice little bit of damage. 2-4 is not great, but we do have Mist Binders and Deep Root Elites to keep pumping him up. Uh, the 4 toughness, though, does keep him out of most removal range. The 3 mana cost keeps him out of Fatal Push. So he is actually a difficult creature to remove, which makes him a solid option in this deck. You can tap 3 on tap Merfolk your control as well to draw a card. So if we have some summoning sick creatures, maybe you have a uh, Jungle Born Pioneer that's just come down. That's 2 of the 3 we need. Kamena can tap himself then to draw a card. It means that wiping boards and... Um, clogging up board states isn't too much of a problem for us because we can just keep churning through our deck to find the answers that we need. We'll get to a, a an answer right after this one. Other than that, though, we can also, in the really grindy games, tap five untapped merfolk we control to put a counter on each merfolk we control. So if we've got five creatures on the board, tap them all, stick counters on them, they're suddenly a lot bigger. I'm imagining as well, if we've got five creatures on the board, one of them's going to be a misbinder, so we're going to be making some big, fat boys. So as far as ending the game in clogged up board states is concerned, we want to be digging for things like Tempest Caller. This is a solid, solid card to break a stalemate. So for two and two blue, we get a two, three, when it enters the battlefield, you tap all creatures target opponent controls. So we do have a little bit of unblockable uh, damage getting in occasionally with Kamena and River Sneak. But Tempest Caller just clears the way completely. If our opponent is trying to stop us with tokens and things like that, Tempest Caller is just going to instant win the game. The mana base is pretty simple. We've got nine islands, seven forests. Uh, we are actually having an even split because we've got two Hashep Oasis in here, which is nice to pump up a River Sneak or a Kamena or something like that. And then we've got four Unclaimed Territories. The mana base is pretty budget. I do believe that the um, the starter deck does actually come with a Hinterland Harbour, so you could actually run that in this list over an island or anything like that. Just swap out the basic lands uh, for dual lands. You might want to consider not... Uh, skewing a little bit more in the islands though because of course Kamena Speaker does get that bonus for having islands in place so that is something to be aware of. Botanical Sanctums are also a really solid choice as a land upgrade here and honestly I might just cut the Hashep Oasis if you are going to go dual land based. So as far as this deck's concerned it's pretty damn budget. We've got three Mythics and four uh, rares in this deck. I don't believe we're running anything else than that. So hyper budget in this particular case. Uh, it's not the ultra budget that you might expect, but we're not even running like all of the rares that I could be running in this deck. So there's plenty of room for improvement. In addition to that, uh, they did just give me a um, a starter deck for Merfolk as well. So Jade Bearers are already half there. Kamena Speakers are already half there. Re River Sneaks are already half there, Silver Gills are already half of them, Murphy Branch Walkers, Mist Binders, and things like that. And there's plenty of solid, solid cards in this list to fill the slots that you are missing. Yeah, we have the Hinterland Harbor here. If you're playing this starter deck, by the way, get rid of the Woodland Streams. You don't want Taplands for the most part. 
Um, get rid of those for unclaimed territories. This deck has a lot of non-creature stuff in it, and that's probably how I would upgrade this list if you did want to build off of this. Mirror image is terrible. Um, but yeah, get yourself a play set of Mistbinders at the very least as a immediate upgrade. Maybe even play Deep Root Wars. I like that card quite a lot. So we're going to take it through a couple of matches as we are known to do in this particular case. So I'm going to showcase Under the Sea for you guys and hopefully we can get a good selection of matches to showcase. Alright guys, see you in the matches. Alright, we're in. This hand is hot garbage. It's getting an instant mulligan. Not even going to entertain the idea of having that hand. This hand is god tier, so I'm going to take this hand. I will entertain this all day. Fortunately, this isn't an island. Otherwise, we might have been in an actual god tier situation, but beggars cap choosers. Our opponent going with the Bowmat Courier. Happily going to trade here. Yeah. Since we can't actually pump this speaker anytime soon, definitely will trade it for a bow map. Merfolk, let's try and resolve a deep root elite to stick some counters on things. This won't resolve, it'll just eat removal, but that's fine. Unless our opponent gets greedy. They kind of do. Alright, well, let's try take deep root elite out of removal range. Do 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 do. Oops, wrong color, or lack thereof. Do 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 do. That's out of lightning strike range, out of shock range, out of magma spray range. It now needs a two for one. Land, please, so I can play this pioneer. I think if I don't, I'll play a river sneak. We'll do some fun stuff there. Opponent on 16. Nice. Nice. I imagine he gets in still. Uh, do I keep my creatures around? I think maybe I do. If I get like a Kamena later in the game, I'll be happy to have the bodies down. My opponent's just going to follow this up with another creature. Maybe even just to carry Zev anyway. So I'll take the three. Plus, I've got to contend with potential removal, which would be a blowout in this situation. By the fact that my opponent was hovering over my speaker there, suggests to me that he had some. The hover of, what should I do with these creatures? Wow, lightning strike on the 2-2. Two -two. And a Bomac Courier. Alright, that's pretty good. I think we're going to go River Sneak. My opponent probably quite low on removal, I would imagine. So, get in with the deep root. I've got a Jade Bearer to block the Courier, so he can't get in with that, really. River Sneak's going to get a Mega Pump next turn. Yeah. I'm going to block your Courier. I'll trade a 1-1 one -one for three cards. <laughs> Sure. That's three points of damage not going at our face. Goblin Instigator. That's annoying, but not the end of the world. Hmm. Silvergill. Um... So Pioneer represents two extra bodies, one that can block the courier and you can't really do anything about it, which uh, is four power, six, I'm swinging for ten, he just blocks here though, but he takes six. I think we go Pioneer, we go for the beatdown plan, I think we're actually just going to outrace him. Counter. Getting uh, River Sneak out of removal range is also very disgusting. Alright, swing for 10. Can't chump the 6-6. Six, six. 
can chump the river deep root elite. I've now got a hexproofing blocker for the Bomac Courier. Which he is going to crack most likely because I don't really see a situation where my opponent can't just empty his hand and looks like he is. So he's going to get to partially refill. But I get to keep a 1 1 round. He's at 6. Can he dare to actually get in? I suppose from his perspective, this river sneak just represents lethal if he doesn't. So he's, his win condition is hoping that I don't have a way of pumping this twice. Which, I mean, it's theoretically possible. Okay, three mana left, two cards in hand. What have you got? Gutter Snipe. And there's Branch Walker. I think we got Silver Guild, though. Since this is our opportunity to make it cheaper. Draw a card. Uh, we are going to put a counter here. And there's six power. Unblockable, ready to go, beating a weird version of Red Deck Wins. I'll take it. Alright, this hand uh, doesn't get much better, I don't think. Three mana is top of our curve. For the most part. Um, we've got Deep Root Elites up the wazoo and Branch Walkers as well for some sweet exploring action. Our opponent goes with a Cinder Baron's Tat. Hmm. Uh, do I want to go for the Greedy Jade Bear and hold it until turn 3? Yeah, I think so. His removal might be partially burn based, so... I don't expect this one to resolve, but the next one might. This one getting fatal pushed or lightning stricken or shocked. Fatal pushed. Shock. Salivating gremlins. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under control, it gets plus two, plus oh, and trample. Alright, that's not going to really be a problem for us. Let's go Deep Root Elite again. Really would have liked this to be a forest. Beggars cannot be choosers. Wow. Seriously? Alright, well, if that's the case... Hmm. I think my opponent's getting ready to kill Deep Root Elite. I really want a Branch Walker for a forest. We could branch walker, if we don't hit a forest, we river sneak. Our opponent's going to kill this deep root elite most likely, so I'm just going to completely ignore it for the most part. Yeah, I think that's what we want to do. Let's try cut, put counters on it. Uh, graveyard you. Wow, I was not confident that that was going to be the case. Problem is, it still dies to a lot of my opponent's removal. So unless I can take it very far out of range, I'm not going to put more counters on it. It's like Jungle Bomb Pioneer will take it out of range of burn spells. Wow, Reveling Riches. Okay. An Unclaimed Territory is really nice here. So we get Jade Bearer. Counter on you. Counter on you. So now you're out of burn range. We'll then go Jungle Born Pioneer for the extra Merfolk. Which pumps up the River Sneak. We'll stick counters on you. Counters on you. And go swinging. Opponent takes it all. Alright, well, he better have a board wipe. He's got a ravenous chupacabra. Okay. So that kills a creature. Generates him a token. Which pumps up his gremlins. 
And opponent says good game. Beat down. This deck is definitely capable of a solid beat down when things go well for it. Otherwise, it's usually just a value deck. You know, slow incremental gains and things like that. Let's go for another game. Alright, uh, this hand, if one of those forests had been an island, this would be god tier, but it is not, so we're going to still take it. So it's not actually a bad hand in any stretch. Uh, turn two, I mean, we can river sneak and pump speaker up anyway, so. I wouldn't have minded some better mana, that's all. It's like blue for spell pierce is kind of important on occasion. Especially in a matchup like this one. This looks like it might be relevant. Deep Root Elite. Okay. Uh, we'll slap you down. Not confident you're going to live very long, but we will do it. Might just get Essence scattered right here, honestly. Does not. It's probably going to get shocked, though. There's no way my opponent doesn't have an answer for that. Yep, there it is unreasonable to expect my opponent not to have something like that. Mistbinder. Alright, well, we're gonna go River Snack. See what my opponent has for us. Nothing so far. Okay, well, Speaker... Is going to mean that Speaker stays as a 2 2. Six power on board on turn three. It's not too bad. Opponent's going to opt, start digging. I don't quite know what my opponent's deck is. Looks kind of stormy. The opts are usually an indicator of a combo deck or an instant and sorcery matters kind of deck. Opponent might be doing something with Enigma Drake, maybe. The interesting thing about the uh, matchmaking system, Primal Amulet. All right. Yeah, the interesting thing about the uh, matchmaking system in this one is because it's actually um, the fact that I'm using a budget deck, which means I'm not using very many powerful cards. It's actually matching me against uh, people who are also not using very powerful cards. Just so happens that mine are value based, so. Quite a lot of the time I come out on top in that regard. Unless my opponent, Hour of Devastation's here. We're all good. Oh, that looks like Hour of Devastation. Ah! Okay. I see how it is. We're not exactly uh, in a bad position, though. Kamena can rebuild. Uh, Silvergill can also rebuild. Let's try and hit a land, I guess. Reveal... Mm, Pioneer. Oops. Oh, God damn it. Misclick. Good old misclick. Got an Essence Scatter? Nope. It's probably another opt. There's a land drop. That's nice. He's got another opt. Hmm. So what's he going to use that primal amulet for? Bane fire as a win condition seems reasonable. Nexus of fates. We all know how fun that is with a primal amulet. Uh, sure. Help me fix my mana. Gotcha. An improvement, I say. Hmm. Yeah, let's get him for more damage. I think we are now in beatdown mode. Got a counter? Yeah. Fine. Close to flipping the amulet. We get him for two more damage, though. Three turn clock. It's almost a two turn with uh, Jungle Born though, if that resolves. 
We're on the cusp of winning, but we're also on the cusp of losing. Seriously? Why? Let's go get another island. At this stage, honestly, an island is better than unclaimed territory, because that just enables spell pierce. More often than not, so let's just swing for two. Looks like my opponent's going for the amulet flip. Interesting choice. Okay, so now I Silvergill Adept, reveal the Merfolk I was going to cast anyway, and draw a card. And play the Merfolk. He's going to have to do something really crazy with this Wellspring. I mean, Banefire doubled, is that going to do it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. Not quite. Alright, we're going to pre-combat everything just in case things like that happen. Let's get Kamena down. Um, yeah, let's just swing with all. And he needs a board wipe now. Or a way to kill me. He doesn't have it. Okay. I was wondering whether or not attacking with everything there would correct. It probably wasn't, but I was also not in the mood to do the math. Uh, the idea being that we just leave enough Merfolk for Kamena to draw a card. So if he does have the wipe, at least we have extra cards in hand. That's the idea, at least. There's a lot of um, minute things that you've got to do with this deck. A lot of incremental bits of value that you've got to take, uh, take notice of. But it's a very fun deck, all the same. Uh, let's time for one more? I think so. All right, this hand looks uh, pretty sweet, actually. Let's take it. Turn one, Jade Bearer. Turn two, Miss Binder. Swing for two. Turn three, Kamena. Or Miss Binder. Depends, I suppose, what we draw. Zombos, eh? All right, tribal on tribal action. Let's go. My opponent's one drop. So far, beating our one drop. Does his two drop beat our two drop? I suspect this is actually going to be a little bit of a grim matchup. Our opponent's interaction is removal. Ours is counter-based for non-creature stuff. Plus he's got the ability to give death touch to zombies. Also not really a great thing for us. Uh, let's reveal Jade Bearer. I'm probably going to play that alongside the Mistbinder next turn. Can you block? You can block. It's just end up tapped. Alright. Poisoner Flash. Sure. Ooh. Triple Miss Binder. This hand's looking a little better. A little bit better. So I want one more land drop so I can Miss Binder, Miss Binder the turn after next. That should be quite good. As long as you don't give a uh, mass death touch to everything. River Snack. Alright. Hey, Mirfilk. And Jade Vera. Um, doesn't really matter. Stick on the Jade Vera. Swing. I'm fine with a double trade because I know that I'm going to be filling the board with uh, lords. So my beatdown is much better than yours. Do I Silvergill looking for a land? Or do I just miss Binder? I think I Silvergill for a land. We're not in a position where not being greedy is a worry. <laughs> I can be greedy and not punished. Didn't get what I wanted, but not punished. Swing. 
still want to see that double land, because double land means that we're going to win. That must be nice. Must be nice. Alright, let's get River Sneak down. Should have actually held open the island there, but it's not going to matter. We're going to name Merfolk. Gonna go green, blue, blue, green. Get swinging. Does our opponent have another board wipe? If he doesn't, I suspect a scoop animation right here. It's not actually presenting lethal. It's close enough, though. It's got a never. Okay. Still a two-turn clock. We get a Kamena down, plus a Spell Pierce. Oops. Need the blue. Get swinging. Zabontu's Last Reckoning, Golden Demise, Yeheni's Expertise, all of those, I'm not going to do it anymore. Gonti. Mm. Keeps him alive. Actually, no, it doesn't. What am I talking about? Takes six. So he gets to look at my deck. He gets to look at the things that I have before I kill him. There's no life link on Gonti. It's just death touch. So block and take six. Beat down wins once again. Sweet. That's going to do it for today's episode of Budget Magic for this week. Uh, if you did enjoy this content, then it does help me out a great deal. If you do, like and subscribe for more of this in the future. Sharing this video around as well with anyone you think might need some uh, budget assistance is also a great way to support the channel, so I greatly appreciate it any support that you guys show for these deck series. I do enjoy making them, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching them. So, without further ado, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.